Ever since Marvel began Phase 4, their money has burned like ghost pepper flavored condoms. With over $600 million in losses, the only movie that was able to make up most of that was the middling Spider-Man No Way Home. And things have looked bad for the monopolistic cinematic universe with no talent or plan for things to come. That was until one of those boxes was finally checked when the legend himself, Sam Raimi, was hired on to direct Doctor Strange 2, and many a nerd, myself included, collectively turned their pants to the inside of a Twinkie because maybe, just maybe, Sam Raimi's return to Marvel would be exactly what everyone needed. Heroes making great sacrifices and villains coming to heel-turning realizations compounded with all of the Raimi-isms people have come to know. So, does Raimi do it? Does Raimi blow minds and warm hearts in his return to the genre he helped define and save? Well, kinda? Let me explain. Doctor Strange 2 opens with another universe of Strange and a girl named America Chavez being chased by a monster made out of evil toilet paper. After Doctor Man Bun is bested by the beast, Chavez opens a portal and is transported to our world where our Strange ends up saving Chavez from another monster, this time a discount Starro. Chavez then goes on to explain that she is being hunted for her power which allows her to travel the multiverse like a less interesting episode of Sliders. And yes, you did hear me right, the Hispanic superhero's power is crossing borders. Anyway, Chavez is then brought to Camartage for detention, I mean safekeeping, while Strange seeks out Wanda for help and advice. Which turns out to be a mistake, because Wanda has now accepted her true identity as the Scarlet Witch and has been sending the monsters after Chavez like a Pokemon trainer with a grudge. You see, Wanda has decided that her willful choice to let go of her made-up family and the personal growth that came with it needed to be thrown out in favor of turning her into a villain with one of the dumbest plans I have ever seen in the MCU. Strange, of course, doesn't just hand over Chavez and becomes lost in the multiverse with Chavez after fleeing from Wanda and so begins the real adventure in this very expensive episode of Doctor Who. Like any mess, you have to start somewhere and the positives are as good as place as any. If you're looking for Raimi's unique flavoring, it's here. His favor of practical effects when most other directors wouldn't, which helps the world feel a little bit more real. There are camera zooms, spins, and more Dutch angles than a geometry class. And of course, elements of his horror are here, which do suit the film given the setting. Raimi has always been a good director, and his unique flair is what the MCU has desperately needed from the beginning, giving directors with established styles a chance to breathe life into a franchise that's been shot almost as flat as Predator 2 this entire time. And as for the acting, Cumberbatch and Olsen do most of the heavy lifting because newcomers like Zaktil Gomez as Chavez has less charisma than a substitute teacher. The music is interesting as well, with Raimi bringing on Danny Elfman, peaking with a musical battle between two stranges showing Elfman as a fan of Scott Pilgrim. Now, that's not many, but there are positives. Now, conversely, let's begin with the biggest issue I have with the film, the magic. I do not buy what is happening when the rules are soft and anything goes. Case in point, the scene in which Wanda is chasing Doctor Strange and company. The group is 20 feet in front of her as she hobbles after them repeatedly attempting to impede her by closing blast doors. The blast doors do nothing because she can just wave her hand and tear the door in half like Juggernaut did Deadpool. If she can do that, then why not just kill Strange and company while brainwashing America for her selfish needs with a wave of her hand? And if Wanda can speak a single sentence and remove someone's mouth, then why not disappear Strange or knock out America or anything else within the writer's imagination? You see, chase scenes like these work in movies like Terminator because the characters are on almost all equal footing. Sarah Connor helping an injured Kyle Reese while a damaged Terminator hobbles after the two of them without a firearm works. That is tense because the Terminator is like a wall slowly closing in until the inevitable end. If the Terminator had a firearm and both Sarah and Kyle were having the same difficulty closing the heavy door, the ending of that movie would be very different. Now imagine that same scenario except both parties have incredibly powerful magic users with next to no limit to their capabilities. This is the same crap that makes me want to rip out my hair like every single time Goku forgets he can use instant transmission. With such lazy situations, of course I'm not going to give a damn about what I'm watching because I have more questions than there are pages on the script. Why not just say another sentence that will knock everyone out? Or anything else that would advance your goal since neither Strange nor any other group of characters can stop you. And if that stupid argument hasn't been put to rest with Wanda doing to the Walmart brand Illuminati what Shao Kahn would do to the Teletubbies. All of this because continuity has been shoved down an industrial paper shredder. Wanda is yet another character Marvel has chosen to absolutely annihilate. I don't know which is worse, the lack of context from WandaVision, making Wanda's turn to the dark side a bigger what-the-fuck moment than 
and how Luke Skywalker died, or the knowledge of WandaVision and how that show concluded. Either way, Wanda is now a full-blown mass-murdering villain. Thanks, I hate it. How about Strange himself? One of the greatest minds in the Avengers roster, but wasn't smart enough to ask Spider-Man a couple questions. Well, his own sequel continues this trend of his ever-lowering IQ as he forgets once again that he can teleport without the need for the sling ring. I know the ring was removed, but Thor Ragnarok exists. Can't just erase that. And then there is the writing. I have not been this confused by simple dialogue in a long while. So many conversations either ignore moments that occur not a few minutes prior or flip between emotions like a confused teenage daughter. If that wasn't redundant, there are moments like Doctor Strange sitting down with a former co worker and the conversation is summarized as this You ruined my life. I was dead. So was I. And when I came back, my brother was dead too. Oh. And my cats. Oh well, you might be the greatest superhero, but you didn't get the girl. That what fuck the was? Yeah, I'm not kidding, that happened, and many other moments like this will make your head spin in confusion, like the Illuminati believing Doctor Strange is both the biggest and most consistent threat to the multiverse. I'm sorry, we're dealing with the multiverse. Anyone at any given point in time is both the greatest and least threat to the multiverse. It's like everyone in this film ingested lead. I'm baffled by how utterly fucking stupid everyone in this film is. And the best example is Wanda's plan. She wants her family back. That's reasonable. So why not ask Strange if it's possible to open a portal to a dimension where Vision and the two kids are alive but that universe's Wanda isn't? Oh, but Reed Richards explains that if you remain in a universe that's not your own, then you risk an incursion, which is basically the end of the world. Okay, but if that's the case, then why isn't that the play against Wanda? Like, explain to Wanda that she can't have have what she wants because it would destroy her and her family. For that matter, why not make that the story where Strange has to save Wanda, but he lost track of her so now he has to find her before it's too late? Like, that would have worked far better for the theme of not getting what you want between Strange and Palmer as well. Also, on the point of incursions, if that's the case, then Chavez's mere presence is enough to threaten entire universes. Like, I'm just confused. It's like the film is trying to tell us on one hand that, yeah, Chavez is really cool and we need to keep her because she's a refugee from her own universe, but also she's a real threat to everything that we have dear so we have to deport this portal back to her own world. Like, what the fuck is the message of this movie? This is what happens when you hire the writer for Loki. Wanda in the multiverse of cameos is bad on a cosmic scale. It isn't necessarily Raimi's fault either, considering how bad those behind the story, world building, and other essential components are. Imagine being told that Gordon Ramsay is gonna make you a home-cooked three-course meal to prove he still has what it takes after not being in the kitchen for ten years. And when time comes, you finally are served this lone hot bowl of microwave reheated Kraft macaroni and cheese. But you know what film was a three-course meal? The motherfucking Northman! And you can hear my thoughts on Robert Eggers' third home run at the link over here, and don't forget to subscribe and join my kingdom.